Joining me now is California Republican Congressman Ed Royce. He is the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Chairman, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Brianna. You know, you have been, I guess you could say, frustrated. You've been critical of President Obama, really with the pace of how he's dealt with ISIS. Now we have these airstrikes in Syria. Uh, what, what do you think of this? Well, I have been in contact with uh, the Kurdish foreign minister and those representing the Kurdish communities. And yes, the frustration is that we had these Kurdish battalions, men and female battalions, holding off ISIS without the air support that they felt they needed. Now that air support is coming forward, and uh, that's very positive. But it's, it's the pace. 116,000 airstrikes in the first Gulf War when Kuwait was invaded uh, were done in a matter of, of several weeks, six weeks. And, you know, it defeated the fifth largest army in the world at the time. In this particular case, uh, you have a situation where it has been so long in coming that ISIL has been able to take over a lot of territory and, frankly, practice a tremendous amount of cruelty on the ground, um, in, including especially to, you know, the, the women and, and girls of those who they've defeated, who they've taken as concubines. It, it was not necessary to allow them to take this much ground against you know, such a vast population, and I'm glad to see the airstrikes coming now. So now, but the pace of airstrikes as they are right now, so you may have wanted to see this sooner, but are you happy now with what you were seeing? Do you think this is the right move that we're seeing right now? I think it's very encouraging to see the, the Saudi Air Force up in the air, the UAE, uh, including this female pilot uh, that you referenced, uh, the fact that you that you see the Jordanians involved in the air campaign from Bahrain as well, this is the type of coalition in the region that you want to see in the air. What we need to see next is the transfer of the types of weapons needed by the Kurdish forces, and not just the Kurdish forces in Iraq, but also the Kurdish forces that over the last two days were fleeing from Syria. The Kurds have 190,000 men and women under arms, but it's, they've got very light armament. They need the anti-tank missiles and the artillery. And if we can get that into them, they can surely stand up against this 30,000 uh, ISIS uh, fighters uh, that are on the ground, and it's high time we gave them the assets they need. You heard the Pentagon spokesman there really, I think, managing expectations. The Obama administration sure. is now telling the American people this is going to be a years-long battle. You need to prepare for that, they're essentially saying. What's your reaction to that? Seven months ago, the request was made to start hitting these ISIS columns as they were coming out of Syria into Iraq, out when they were on the open desert, and they were easy targets. Now, if you, if you wait for a year or two years and you dribble out a strategy, you, you won't put a decisive end to an organization like that. But on the other hand, if you have a very robust air campaign and you put together the coalition partners and you go in and arm the Arabs and the Kurdish forces that want to fight them, and remember, in the past we were successful in getting, in getting uh, the Sunnis in Anbar province to rise up against, you know, al-Qaeda and to defeat them. And, but to do that, it takes... Um, it takes a strategy, and it takes a robust effort. Now, we don't want to see U.S. troops in there. We don't want to see the 82nd Airborne, you know, put into this cauldron. But we certainly want those who have been fighting ISIS now for a considerable length of time yeah. to get the weapons, to pick up, you know, pick up the pace here. And I think if we pick up the pace, uh, we're, we're going to see a lot of discouraged young men who may want to take their Western passports right now and get on a plane because they think... They think ISIS is winning. When they see that fortune reversed on the ground, when they see these female battalions of Kurdish women defeating ISIL units, as happened last week, I, th I think some of these young, young men will reconsider, you know, flying in to join that effort. I guess I'm also, I'm asking you sort of the political question of this, though. President Obama right. is, he's doing something that I, I would say Republicans are much more comfortable with than Democrats. And I'm sort of trying to get... I'm trying to get to the point here of, does he deserve credit for that in your view? Well, I think his national security team has sort of pushed the president into this position. As we remember, you know, 
uh, well over a year ago. General Petraeus, as CIA director, along with his Secretary of Defense, his Secretary of State, uh, Hillary Clinton at the time, came to him and said, you need to to have a decisive plan to deal with this. You need to, you know, support, support the Free Syrian forces and so forth. And the president vetoed that plan that was, was pushed. Uh, it was a very long process to get the president to the point where he could endorse the idea of responding with air power crisis. And as I mentioned, it cost on the ground 16 cities that were taken by ISIS as that process laboriously went forward. So what we need are decisions quicker uh, that are decisive. And I think th the president has made the right decision here in terms of the coalition, but it is important for us, and certainly in Congress as, as chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, I've been talking to the ambassadors of these countries pressing this case. We, we've got it. We're all in this together. The president, the members of Congress, the American public, we all need to get behind an effort here to extinguish this, des destroy this ISIS campaign, this ISIS effort over there as soon as we possibly can uh, in order to uh, discourage the continued development of, of this jihadist activity. Chairman Ed Royce, thanks so much for being with us. Really appreciate it. I want to bring back in the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Ed Royce, uh, joining us from California. Chairman, this is, this is very significant, uh, right? Give us your reaction to this. Well, the reason this is so important is that there's close to a thousand young men like this one from Britain who are fighting with this ISIS organization today, as well as 300 from the United States approximately. And they hold these passports, this is just as this young man holds this passport. The fact that they're willing to commit this kind of mayhem and murder um, and at the same time advocate coming back to Europe and coming to the United States and carrying out these attacks is the very reason why Interpol, why the British uh, intelligence agencies and the United States are working right now to track exactly who these young men are. At the same time in my committee, as chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, we're going to move legislation when we go back in on, on uh, November 12th to try to get a better handle on those who try to come back into the United States and make certain that, that they're apprehended if they did, in fact, uh, end up going into Turkey and over to the border into Syria and were involved in, in these kinds of operations with ISIS. So this man may be the tip of the iceberg in a way, and that was, it, it's, it's important to note that if U.S. authorities have identified this man who had a British accent, and we understand that this, that's all we're being told, that he is British, explain why his name isn't being made public. If he's the tip of the iceberg, I'm assuming it has something to do with the fact that, that right. uh, authorities don't want to give away their lead here. That is exactly right. And remember, he is recruiting, just as the Australian who is putting out the videos uh, and sending back the message. He's there with his nine-year-old and seven-year-old son, um, an Australian ISIS leader, along with about uh, 300 uh, Australians who have been recruited into this effort. And he's trying to recruit more. And the Australian yeah. uh, uh, service just managed to put down an attempted attack in the homeland. The, the fellow who put out the video, uh, in fact, carried out a previous attack, an attempted bombing of a government building in, in Australia. He served time for it. So clearly these individuals have the capability of yeah. carrying out these attacks. The question is, can we intercept them? And one of the reasons you don't give him a lot of publicity uh, unnecessarily is because, yes, they're following up on his other contacts back in Britain. Yeah. They are also uh, making certain that this isn't used for recruitment purposes. Certainly. Chairman Ed Royce, thanks so much for your, uh, uh, for your insight on that.